Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on motion today we're going to see our second part in the series about speed time graphs. As the last video of the series about motion graphs, today we're going to play the distance traveled by an object from a speed time graph. In the previous lesson we have seen how to interpret the different kind of shapes in a speed time graph. So when we have an object which is not moving, when we have an object which is moving at a constant speed, or when we have an object which is moving at, with a positive or a negative acceleration. Today we're going to push forward uh, the kind of information that we can get from a speed time graph. So before we get to some general uh, rule about how to use speed time graphs to find the distance traveled by an object, let's see some examples. For instance, let's, um, let's see an example of an object which is moving at a constant speed of 10 meters per second over a time of 15 seconds. And as you can see here from my graph, this motion is represented by a straight line, not a flat line, sorry parallel to the x-axis. Okay, now, uh, looking back at the definition of speed and looking at our magic triangle, we want to find the distance traveled. So again, what is the formula that we're going to use? Right, by moving our hand and covering distance, we have that the distance is speed times the time. So I'm going to rewrite the formula here and I'm going to replace the variables with their values. t is 15, and if you multiply them together, you get the value for our distance. And remember, so far we haven't used the information from the graph. No, we have just have used information that the speed is 10, the distance is 15, we use uh, the magic triangle, and we got the distance. But let's look back again at our graph. No? Now, if we want to represent the graph as a solid, uh, you see it's, it's a rectangle, okay? And you know uh, that the area of rec rectangle is given by base times height. Here's the formula. So what happens if we replace these variables with our values? Again, we'll have a base, which is 15, and the height, which is 10, so 15 times 10, here we have again 150. And we, if you also do a, what we call a dimensional calculation, you also get that the unit is actually meters. If you multiply meters per second times second, you get meters. Now, you might think that this is just coincidence. Okay, we had a constant speed. All right and we get that the distance is equal to the area, but maybe just be when it's a constant speed. So let's look at our example. When we have a speed which is changing, actually let's see in a case where we have a constant acceleration, which in a speed time graph, you know now it's represented by a straight line. And again, we have a motion that goes on for 15 seconds, starts from zero and gets all the way to 10 meters per second. Now, you might think, okay, we cannot use the um, magic triangle in this case. And you'll be wrong if you think that, because remember, the magic triangle and the formula that we be used from the beginning refers to the average speed. So it doesn't refer to zero, doesn't refer to the final speed, refers to the average over this journey. And how do we get the average over this journey? Now, when you have a speed which is increasing constantly, find the average is very simple. You just get the two extreme values, in this case will be 10 and 0, and you add them together. And then you divide by 2, like you do a normal average. And you will see that the average speed over this journey, not surprisingly, is 5. We've done previously. We can write the formula for distance speed times the time, remembering that here we have to put the average speed. So we're going to put 5 times 15, which is the time over which this motion has occurred, and we get the value of 75 meters. So once again, let's replace our graph with a solid shape, and we get this 
triangle, this right triangle. And again, uh, what is the area of a triangle? It's one half base times height. In this case, the base, well, once again, the base is 15, the height is 10, but now it's multiplied by one half because that's the area of a triangle. And if you do the math again, and there's several ways you can do it, you can do one half of 15, which is 7.5 times 10, or you can do 15 times 10, which is 150 by divided by 2, and so on and so forth. But the answer is always the same. It's 75 meters, which is again the same result we got by just using the equation of motion, by just looking at the magic triangle. So, at this point, this, this result that we have uh, proven in the case of a constant speed or a constant acceleration can be actually be proven for any kind of motion. For that though, you will have to wait in later years in high school when you start a branch of mathem mathematics known as calculus. When you're going to look at derivatives and integrals, you will see that in a speed time graph you can always look at the area under the graph and that will give you the distance traveled. This is the rule, this is the, what we have just found and this is very very important because now we know that if we have a speed time graph the area under the line that represents the motion is numerically equal to the distance traveled. And that's all for today. Goodbye from Mr. Buscarini.